Hi everybody, my name is Joe K. It's Joe K Music and welcome to another day in the underground. Today I have some very interesting news that I want to talk about. For some of you that have been following the vlog for a while and have heard me on some other vlogs, you know that I'm a huge fan of Rhyme Sayers. And there was some news that came out last year around this time uh, that I, I've never covered up until this point because I kicked off the vlog in January. At that point, it was kind of old news. But within the last few days, there has been a statement from one of the uh, artists on Rhyme Sayers uh, that has kind of perked up some interest here. And I think it's going to be interesting to discuss. So I want to dive into that today. Uh, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on the whole situation. And I'd like to hear your input on where do we go from here. So a few days ago, Dem Atlas put out a video about his situation at Rhyme Sayers. We're going to take some time to look at that and watch some of that. And, and, and I want to give my, my comments on the video. But I want to take a step back for those of you that haven't been following the story to give you a little bit of context. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the original uh, social media post from Rhyme Sayers from last June talking about the situation. So as you can see here, uh, this is a, a Twitter post, but this was also posted on Facebook and some of their other social media. But it was, uh, abuse of women is not acceptable and is not in alignment with our values. The reports of abuse that have come to light this past week are not things that we've ever tactically condoned or were previously aware of. We have taken the last few days to process these reports because we felt it was important to allow survivors the opportunity to speak and for us to listen discuss and reflect before adding our voice to the discussion to the survivors in our community we know you've been hurt our community is not whole without you or until you are whole we've always sought to create an environment that is safe and inclusive but this week has shown us where we have failed to abusers racists and those engaged in predatory behavior we don't want you as artists fans or affiliates and as we become aware of you you will be held accountable. We also need to hold ourselves accountable for writing off what we interpreted as an artist's approach to humor and entertainment when it actually harmed survivors and perpetuated an environment rife with misogyny. We apologize for the harm this has caused. We understand that we have a responsibility to be more intentional with our actions and our platform moving forward. Since these reports began surfacing, we've been listening, reflecting, and engaging in conversation with our staff, artists, and community members to determine how we can proactively address racism, sexism, misogyny, and the toxic ma masculinity that pervades our culture. We cannot do that work alone and are aware that our solutions are as complex as the issues. So... As you can see here, they're they're painting a picture of the issue, right? They want to let their fans know. They want to let everybody know what the issue is. It's pretty clear here what the issue is. But there's more. As we look at this further here, uh, this is where it really starts to get interesting and, and where it, it starts to actually call out specific artists um, uh, through the post. We have a long tradition of working with very intentional artists and rarely have ever felt the need to discuss that those intentions are or what those intentions are in listening and reflecting over the past few days. We acknowledge that we failed to not only vet the signing of prof, but also calling into question the intentions behind his music messaging and content more strongly. We like many others separated the music from potential behavior. Thus, we were complicit in promoting and marketing music that perpetuates misogyny. I think that's a very interesting uh, statement coming from a hip-hop label. But if you're not a fan of Rhyme Sayers, you would think that that was more interesting than it really is. Because Rhyme Sayers has always been very uh, uh, quote-unquote conscious right like it's been very like conscious rap and so it's not really a far cry from that original foundation that they've set 
to say that they don't want to be associated with these kind of acts. It, it just, it, I guess it doesn't really surprise me, but it does surprise a lot of other fans and people that maybe uh, weren't hardcore fans, but people are going to have lots of opinions either way on that. And I'm going to leave that up to people to decide on, on what they want to feel about that statement we just went over. Let's continue. Effective immediately, we have decided to stop where we can the release of the upcoming uh, Powderhorn Suites album and end our relationship with Prof and Stop House Music Group. We have also decided to end our working relationship with Dem Atlas, given recent reports of his behavior. Now, the reports of his behavior, there was some sexual misconduct and some uh, potential rape allegations. Uh, there was also... Uh, some domestic violence allegations uh, against his girlfriend. We're going to get into that in just a moment. The work going forward begins with an unflinching look at how and where abusers live among us and how we can best support survivors of abuse, but also what actionable steps can be taken to promote the safety and upliftment of women, BIPOC, and members of the LGBTQIA community uh, moving forward. Additional immediate actions, stronger and more thorough vetting of new artists and any associated uh, personnel challenge the intention behind any questionable music, art, and content, create a written standard for artist behavior and cut ties with artists that are unwilling to adhere to those standards, greater transparency and communication with the community about the progressive and positive changes we've made and continue to make a creation of a fund that awards grants for music, art, and business initiatives uh, by women, uh, BIPOC, and members of the LGBTQIA community. These actions are just the first step in what will be an ongoing process to do better and work with you to build the community we deserve. Rhyme Sayers Entertainment. That was a lot, uh, but you guys get the idea. So, Prof, gone. Dem Atlas, gone. Or so we thought. This is where things take a turn. Because within the last few days, Dem Atlas put out a statement uh, via his Instagram Live. He threw it up on YouTube. And to me, it was kind of earth-shattering. Not completely shocking, given the state of what usual uh, or typical artist contracts are. Uh, but... It was pretty eye-opening because from reading those statements from Rhyme Sayers last year, you think, wow, they just they just dropped these artists like like a sack of potatoes, right? That's what I thought. That's what the whole rest of the world thought. However, let's go to the tape. This is Dem Atlas's statement about his relationship with Rhyme Sayers and some of the allegations that he was accused of talk about that photo I also want to discuss the uh, relationship between Rhyme Series and myself last year around this time um, Rhyme Series made the decision to publicly release me from the label but uh, that was the statement we just read obviously that was their official statement saying that they were dropping them Atlas I'm here to tell you today that I'm technically still signed with them. Um, Dang. That's it right there. He's technically still signed with them. That is freaking crazy. That is absolutely crazy. It's been going on for a year. And uh, my attorney and myself have tried numerous times to get a hold of them, to bring them to the table, to finalize a separation agreement. Um, but they haven't been getting back to us. We've tried for numerous times to, to, to end things professionally and um, they missed every deadline. So. Wow. So obviously this has been a struggle and a battle for the last year. And a lot of times what, what I've seen happen with other labels is they may shelf an artist, but that doesn't mean that they've dropped the artist. You know, a lot of times in these contracts, 
these guys are signed for a certain number of albums or a certain period of time um, or a certain number of songs, etc. And a lot of the times when they've released music already, that music belongs to the label. Sometimes, depending on the contract, when they're released, they give the masters to the artist and they can go do what they want with the music. Other times, the label owns that music in perpetuity. For those of you that don't know what perpetuity is, it's forever. So Rhyme Sayers can take an artist like Dem Atlas and continue to sell his music, his merch, his image and likeness forever if that's what the contract says if the contract says you know for a limited amount of time for x amount of you know projects or whatever then that's a different story but as of right now if you go to their website and i'm going to throw some screenshots up here if you go to their website right now you can still buy dem atlas's albums you can still buy his merch it's all readily available which is very interesting to me. That you want to cut ties with somebody for some very serious allegations. And I'm not going to get into what I feel is the right thing to do here because I don't know the situation. Right now, it's a he said, she said. And as far as I'm concerned, or as far as I know, nobody's actually gone to jail for what has happened or what has allegedly happened. And nobody's been charged with a crime yet. And by nobody, I mean Dem Atlas in this particular situation. Um, if I'm wrong on that, please let me know. But from as far as I can tell, they dropped him because of the allegations. And regardless, when they put out a statement that's trying to separate themselves from an artist, but continue to sell the artist merchandise on their website, I have a really, I, I kind of have a problem with that. I kind of have a problem with that. As a fan of Rhyme Sayers, if you want to stand up for something and make a statement, then I feel like you really need to stand up for something and make a statement. Because in my mind, standing up for something and making a statement sometimes means taking a financial hit. Let the man go. Like, let him go do what he's going to do. Take all of his albums, take his name, take any reference to him off your website. Do whatever you need to do to clean up your image and cut the guy if you feel that strongly about the situation. It doesn't matter what happened or didn't happen. If that's what you want to do, then you need to do it and you need to stand behind that and you need to deal with the repercussions of that decision. He's going to get into some more detail here that I, I, want, to, I want to hear as well and I, I want to hear from you guys what do you guys think about Rhyme Sayers continuing to sell and profit off of the merchandise and albums of Dem Atlas after putting out a statement a year ago saying that they were dropping him from the label? So now we're going to get into a, some of the context around what apparently happened. This is from Dem Atlas's viewpoint, of course. Uh, on the evening of the... Uh, alleged abuse of his girlfriend at the time. Uh, he doesn't really get into some of the um, sexual misconduct allegations and the sexual assault allegations, um, but uh, he does talk about the allegations of abuse and he kind of uh, high levels some of the other stuff. So again, I'm not going to make a judgment here either way. I just want this to be heard and everyone can make their own assumptions here. Team. 2018, I was with my ex in the back seat of a taxi. Uh, we were on our way to a nightclub in Minneapolis called Ice House. We were drunk and we got into an argument. And during that argument, she said to the cab driver, a straight up lie, she said, did you know he beats me up all the time? And when I corrected her on that and I said, that's not true, why would you say something like that? that's when she started swinging at me and punching me repeatedly in the face. And all I could do during that time was grab her arms and hold her back. When we arrived at the club, the cab driver told us to get the fuck out of the car and the arguing spilled out into the street. 
there were a bunch of onlookers and um, as I was walking away, she ran after me. One of my friends happened to be outside. He grabbed her, held her back, but in doing so, she got away and slipped on some ice and fell face forward, landing on her wrist. She gets up, decks me in the face one last time and goes off into the night. I don't see or hear from her for the rest of the night. The two bouncers outside of the club, they said, Dim, this ain't a good look for you, man. You need to go home. She's white, you're black, and if the cops show up, it's gonna be trouble for you. Go home. The next morning, I woke to bruises on my face and text messages from her friends calling me a monster. They shared with me a picture of her laying in the hospital and she claimed that I did that to her. It's the same picture y'all saw. That's a pretty uh, interesting take on what potentially happened. Um, you know, again, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Um, all I can say is he seems pretty upset about the whole situation here. Um, definitely, you know, some pent up anger. Um, you know, he seems to be, you know, visibly upset, uh, and emotional about the situation as well. Um, you can kind of tell he's kind of going through this, a slew of emotions as he's talking about this. It's not true. Next day, I, uh, I called Rhyme Sayers and I told them about the situation. I told them the story and they told me to do nothing. They told me to say nothing and that hopefully it goes away, but if it doesn't, we'll take care of it. Best thing to do for you is to move on. So I did, I tried. A couple months after the incident happened, my ex and I got up and we talked about that night. We apologized to each other and she apologized to me for lying about how she wound up in the hospital. She admitted to falling down on the ice and landing on her wrist. We continued to hang out for a couple years on and off. Now that's a very interesting part of this story. So if you remember in the beginning, he mentioned the year that all this happened and the date. Um, the story is that he told Rhyme Sayers about this. Rhyme Sayers basically said, don't worry about it. Just don't talk about it. You know, we'll take care of it. Um, he resolved the issue uh, supposedly with his girlfriend and they continued to talk on and off for years. Because I thought of her as a friend and I cared about her and I wanted us to move on. The last time that we spoke or saw each other was February 27th. She stayed at my house and we kicked it and it was cool. I never saw or heard from her again. Fast forward to June of 2020 and she resurrects this issue by once again claiming that I'm abusive and that I sent her to the hospital. I was horrified. The fallout was intense and, um, you know, people, people believe that. People believe that I, that I sent her to the hospital. And I understand why, because I didn't say anything. I couldn't, I was, I was traumatized and I needed time for myself to heal. So I kept it to myself, but I can't, I can't live this way anymore. I gotta be real with you. I can't do this anymore, you know? There's been no justice. There's been no truth. 
I hope this message helps somebody that goes through similar things like this um, to know that you're not alone. Um, it's wild, you know, uh, I wouldn't wish this upon anybody. I think cancel culture is extremely toxic and because um, it seems like anybody can say anything and people will believe it without proof, without evidence. You, you are guilty till proven innocent. And I don't have the answers, but something's got to change. You know? Rhyme Series released a statement um, back of June of 2020, around this time. And they said in that statement that they don't support abusers or predators, and I am none of those things. I am none of those things. I hope that we can get this situation resolved. I would like to move on. And um, I think it's only right that the people know that I am still under contract with Rhyme Sayers. So that's essentially it. And, uh, I, again, I find it very interesting given the statement that Rhyme Sayers put out. Um, and, and just so you guys know, too, we are going to cover uh, some of the other stories around this because, uh, again, Prof was also dropped, supposedly. Um, there was some, some drama going on with uh, Prof's old DJ uh, Fundo. There have been some other artists that have been kind of MIA as well. And so I'm wondering, you know, who exactly was uh, shelved, who was dropped, was anybody dropped? Regardless, all their music is still up on rhymesayers.com. Go check it out right now. It's still up there. That's insane to me. It's insane that you make a statement like this. You tell everybody that you're standing for something. It It's going to divide the fans either way, right? Like some people are going to believe, um, you know, the, the alleged ab abuser. And some people are going to... Uh, believe the alleged uh, abused, right? I'm not going to get into, um, you know, whether I believe Dem Atlas or uh, I believe, you know, the, the person that he allegedly abused. Um, not going to get into that here. That's not for me to decide. Uh, but what I do know is what Rhyme Sayer said on social media to the world and what they did. And to be honest with you as a fan. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Let me know how you guys feel about this situation. Uh, let me know. You know your, your comments. Your thoughts. Um, you know are, are you going to remain a Rhyme Sayers fan? Uh, are you going to be just a fan of the artist? What do you do from here? Also how do we. How do we change a culture within the hip hop community. Is this the best way to do it? Um, what would your approach be to change this? You know, I've heard from a lot of people in that, in that scene in, in uh, uh, Minneapolis. And apparently this is, this is a common theme in the scene there. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's the rumor. If you're from that area, comment below, you know, what your thoughts are. Do you think this stuff is true? Is this something that you've seen? Um, have you heard about any of these artists doing these kind of things to, to women, to anybody? That's about all I have to say about the topic. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, my name's Joe K. It's just another day in the underground. Please make sure to like, comment. Uh, share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to have a slew of different underground hip hop content. It's going to range from rhyme sayers to strange music to undercover prodigy and just about every other underground hip hop label and artist uh, over the next few months. So make sure to stay tuned until then. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. <laughs>